Welcome back to Around Town. Yes, we've been on a little vacation, but not much. But Brian is healing with his right shoulder. Yes, I'm going to take it after all, because this show wouldn't be without you. And uh, so we're glad he's back, and we're back and getting ready for fall. And uh, yes, as you pointed out, yes, I'm going to Ann Arbor in three, two weeks from tomorrow. Because I love the Wolverines. The spot. Green and white, fight, fight, fight. You mean Sparty. <laughs> yeah, Sparty, yeah. Well, no, they're, they're not as, I can take them a little bit. It's, a, it's the other one down south I can't take. Or the one east, you know, Penn State or Ohio State. <laughs> yeah. Those are the two schools I can't stand. <laughs> but, um, but no, it doesn't seem possible. The Patriots are in preseason. The Red Sox are flopping their way through the end. And... And look who I got on today, Mike Walchek. I can't believe it. No hair. The last time I saw him, he was selling cars for Fermani Olds down there on Manchester Street. He sold us one. Navy Blue. Yeah. I remember that car. That was a nice car, too. It was, and you, I, I still thought you were at the, the old Mercury Garage. No. But you were down at the other one, so on, down on top of the hill there. Yeah. Geez, I didn't see that. I thought you were there. But anyway, it's uh, his dad, of course, was police chief here in Concord for many years, Dave Walchak, and he was such a difference from Walt, excuse me, from the previous chief. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's this young guy marching right down the street with his color guy there, and he really, he was in step. I mean, he was, always had a smile. I don't know if he ever got ugly with you kids, but he just was so different, you know? But anyhow, but I'm really happy to see you and, to, and know you're here. And my gosh, just think in a matter of a few years, you join the 60 crowd. Isn't that a riot? It is. Time flies. Here I'm getting ready to hit the 70 crowd. It's like, oh. But uh, it's really good to see you, Mike. But you're here to talk about, I guess, you're involved in some sports here, softball, basketball. And I can't believe it's ready, almost getting ready for basketball. It's like that thing never ends. You know, they start out in what, October, September with training and yeah. exhibition games, early October, the, pro, the pros do. And then it seems like they go all the way up through to June, middle of June, before they crown their champion. You know, it's like, man. Then you get the ladies basketball professional in the summertime. But that was one sport I could not do. I, I had a heck of it. I could not dribble a basketball let alone shoot one. You know, we just, we lived in East Sugar Bar. We had no basketball thing. I mean, we weren't allowed over here at the Heights Park back those days. And so in, in high school, or even junior high, if you couldn't shoot a basket, they were laughing at you and making fun of you and all that stuff. Well, I'm sorry, but I just was not a basketball. Football, yes, I could do football, okay. But basketball was different. But how did you get into that stuff? But your kids? Just... No, I just love officiating. I mean, I got into softball a few years ago and worked my way up. Now I'm doing D1 college softball in the NCAA. And I wanted something to keep in shape in the winter between softball and saw an ad in the paper for basketball yeah, officiating I classes I started. I went and took it, and it was put on by uh, Dennis Ordway, who was the secretary of the uh, Bo, who was the secretary for us. I remember him. And he, uh, yeah, he's been doing that all. He's been doing basketball for a long time, but great trainer. Taught us well, and that's all I do. I mean, I have no interest in going any higher. I do high school, junior high, middle school. Uh, we well, also you can do, do Division I league. softball, but not yeah. Division I baseball, where you might have seen the Wolverines this year in yeah. the, the championship game out there in Omaha. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't see that one, but baseball's not my cup of tea. It's, it's too slow of a moving sport. What's the difference between that and softball? Softball is about an hour and a half for a game. Well, you play nine then innings or seven? Seven. Yeah, that's why. But it, it doesn't matter. It, it's just it, it's a higher speed. The ball actually comes in just as fast, if not faster, than in a baseball game because they're only throwing from 43 feet versus throwing from baseball is what, 90 feet, 86? I know. Baseball is slow, though. It, it is a slow game. It is. It, it, games go three Three to, you know, three, three and a half hours now is what the Major League Baseball oh, is going. Know. And that's why I got bored of it. 
Yeah, it, 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 it is. That's why softball has been making a big thing. Talk, 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 talk about TV. I mean, you, I mean, it's nice to hear history, but my gosh, they just it's it's like they're trying to fill up the time between the pitches. Uh, well, that's it. They, yeah, the, the pitches take a lot more time. Like the differences in softball, you've only got twenty seconds to throw the pitch, so really? they keep the time going and moving. But it's a fast-paced game. It's yeah. the girls are just as athletic and sometimes more athletic than the boys. It's it's amazing to see. Well, I've seen the pitcher in softball when they've done it, and it's like, man, I think their arm would really get, they really wind it up there and go. No, it's actually the most natural position and natural throwing position. Throwing a baseball is unnatural, as Bob Tewksbury once said in his book. It's the hardest thing to do. You wear out your shoulder because it's not the normal thing to do. But wow. pitching underhand is a perfect oh, location. Oh, yeah, I know. Underhand, yeah. Yeah, it's true. So when you're coming around with your arm, it's basically just running straight into huh. that ball coming in, and that's why they can throw so many pitches and not really get hurt with their arm. Yeah. Yeah, I could play softball in high school, but not in baseball. I was never good at that. But once in a while in gym classes, we do softball. But, huh, isn't that interesting? So how many years have you been doing that? Uh, softball? Yeah. I've been doing it for five. And you haven't kicked anybody out of the game? No parents, no unruly fans. You get, you don't, you don't do the fans. The fans, you only, the only part you're worried about is the confines of the field. We don't have to worry about the out of confines. If somebody gets out of control, like in college, they actually have people that are there and they take care of that. Well, you mentioned Dennis Tewksbury because it's my uncle when he lived, when Dennis was a kid and lived in Salisbury. Yeah. His mother was my babysitter as a, as a kid. She oh, okay. Because his grandfather lived on our road on East Sugar Hall. Oh, okay. The Barnets. And so Shirley was our babysitter when my folks all went square dance on Saturday nights with my aunt and uncle. But anyway, Dennis was the one that got, I mean, yeah, my, my uncle Dennis got Dennis Tewksbury started. Bob Tewksbury. I mean, Bob Tewksbury yeah. started in baseball up there, Little League, up there in Salisbury. Oh, okay. And, uh, but yeah, when they did a big article in the paper, they never mentioned Dennis Patton. No, no they all just jumped right into high school or whatever. But um, what made me a bit brought it up was when you I asked you about the fans. My my aunt, rest her soul, she used to go to the games. So, oh, she would argue with the umpire. Oh man! Oh, he, well, you get and that? He would phew, right out the door, and he'd say, "You're you're out of here." And, oh, she would argue with him. Boy, she knew the game just as much as they did. But, uh, you do have fans that do that. You got a lot of fans that don't know anything about the rules. Yeah, and, I know it. But, but what we want to talk about is the basketball because we're coming up yes, with a new class no coming in. Basketball, yes. It's it, it's going to be a real good thing. One of the things that I'm doing this year, where I just took this position over, back in the spring, mm. is we're pushing for a youth movement. So we're trying to get kids 13 and up who can come in, get trained learn they learn more about the game than what they knew because e even i did i thought i knew the game of basketball and then all of a sudden i took dennis's ordway's class and next thing you know mm. there was you know rolling game gambling was there was our president he's been around forever too doing it and they taught me rules that i didn't even know was a rule mm. and i always thought it was something else and it's amazing but now we want to get that youth movement in because yeah you know where, where's a 13 14 15 16 year old kid gonna go and can do on a Saturday morning when they don't have high school games, go and make thirty thirty five dollars for an hour. <laughs> I didn't know they got that paid that much. That yeah, and so you know you can make thirty thirty five dollars an hour, and you're doing one game is an hour in third and fourth grade, and you know the higher up that you go, you get paid a little bit more. Hmm. But it makes it available for the kids that you know. It's one, it's a great part time job. Two, it doesn't take a lot of time out of their schedule, so it's not affecting their homework. It's not affecting their time away. And it gets them involved into it, and hopefully you can get them and push them so that they will become better and move up to a higher level like college or that. Because once you get into college, I mean, if, if you make it into the elite college, people, that's their job. All year long, like you said, they start I know. in college, they start in September, yeah. October, and next thing you know, they go until... Well, the college is in April. April, first of April, where they yep. have the big championship games. But, but they, but you get out of that. But yeah. you know, but your pros, the pros are all over. But th yeah. that's even. But I'm saying you can make a living as a college basketball official. Really? Oh, I've got a friend that does it. She's out of Connecticut. 
she's one of the first females that have come in that came into the league and did it, mm. and she works out. But she makes almost two hundred thousand dollars a year doing college basketball. But she's wow. also doing the elite ACC, yeah. Yeah. the SEC, and she's doing an incredible job. Mm. And she's taught me a lot too. Now, does she travel as a team, or like you travel with a team of umpires, or what? No, I no just, basketball. No, the basketball fish don't. You just get yeah. signed and you go to where you go to go to your school and you meet your crew there. Okay. Yeah, I don't know much about the college level because I haven't done it. But in softball, it's Every weekend, usually a different crew, and they're trying to change that. Now, they've been talking about putting us together and saying, we want three or four guys just to go to a weekend series so that you're consistent, you work with each other all the time, mm. and you become better because you start knowing what each one's going to do, which also can come back and haunt you because you expect them to do something, and if they don't, mm. you're left hanging out on the field. But it's it's interesting. But with the basketball, yeah, our classes are getting ready to start up here in another couple of weeks. Yeah. I'm just putting a thing into the monitor to put the ad for that and spreading the word. And it is a fulfilling thing, and it's a fun thing. And one of the things I do now is I go out in between at halftime. Most officials go walking back and go into the locker room. Mm -hmm. I walk over to the fans and say, okay, ask me a couple of questions of rules that you want to know what the rule is. And educate the fan. That's what you got to do. Well, that's but, interesting, yeah. Yeah, the biggest downfall is that people can't do it is you got to have a thick skin because just like you said, your aunt would yell. Mm -hmm. We would sit there and we've been at games oh, where yeah. I've had parents yelling and it's, I'm listening to them and I'm just shaking my head and laughing inside. You stupid umpire, oh, don't you know the game? Don't you know oh, the strike zone? It's not even that, it's basketball. <laughs> don't you know the rules? And then you explain the rules to the people and next thing you know... <laughs> The parents are like, that's the rule? When did that change? Uh, you know, 20 years ago, but, you know, obviously you haven't been following it enough to know. And some rules have been changed that long ago. Some rules have been changed like four or five years ago. And because they were changed, the people don't know. The coaches don't know because all these coaches yeah, no. in rec league and stuff like that, they're not professional coaches. So they don't know all the rules. So when something happens, they think it's one thing. And when you're trying to explain it to them, but the parents have been the ones, as everybody has seen on TV and all around, yeah. the biggest deterrent to people wanting to officiate. Because you do sometimes take it personal. There are people that do make that attack. Well, referee, you're stupid. Oh, Go take a shower. That. Get off the court. Oh, you're you're a hindrance than, to my player. Oh, it's, <laughs> we, it's worse than that. And, you know, the object is, is what we are there for yeah. is the student athlete. And people yeah. don't get that. I'm not there for the coach. I'm not there for the fans. No. I'm there for the student athlete. That's and right. that's how our object is yeah. to get the call right. Do we make mistakes? Yes. Yeah. We're human. We all do. But our object in the end is to make sure the call is right, to benefit everybody to have a fair game. Yeah. Because we've been accused of, oh, you're from Concord and we just came in from Manchester. You like these guys. We don't know half the teams that they were out because there's so many basketball teams and the officials are down in numbers that I sometimes only see a team once a year. Mm. <laughs> so I could go with all the games that are held just in this area. Yeah. I can hide out and I can be there and have basically in a two year span not have the same team twice. Mm. Sometimes I, I come to Games and I never had a team at all. So you do high school team games too. High, high school saw uh, basketball. Yeah. And then I yeah I do high school. Down. So do you do division one or division four or which division you focus in? Anyone? None. We just get assigned. Yeah. We do them all. I'm not. I mean, there are a lot of schools now. My th gosh. There are a lot of schools and basketball and soccer are your two biggest sports that are done because football's yeah. been dwindled, yeah. softball's been dwindled, baseball because of lacrosse. Lacrosse has come up big. I love. It, it's a good game. I it's love a fast moving game. Fast moving. <clears throat> I love watching lacrosse. I, I, of course, again being a Michigan fan, they now they now division. They were club status, and then now they're Division One because the Big Ten has started their own lacrosse league. Yeah. But uh, and you know, I get confused because sometimes even that's in the spring or fall. I thought it was a fall sport. Not just spring sport. Not just spring sport. Yeah. But no, I mean it's. Uh, Basketball, I mean, and again, I blame TV for some of this because if something happens somewhere with the fans and all of a sudden it's all over national TV, you know, it's like, oh, come on. You know, so of course other people see it. And, you know, 
Oh, uh, we just had an incident where officials have been actually assaulted and hit by parents. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. And it it's sad. Yeah. Because yeah, you, you know, it, it comes in where you have that thick skin, as I just said. You, you got to be able to sit there, and then you got to have that personality that you got to be able to walk a coach, as I call it, off the cliff. That's yeah. just going, hey, yeah. coach, settle down. We're just not going to be like that. We're going to talk as human beings. You know, you don't raise your voice, you lower it. And it's being, you know, you're diplomatic. And you're you just mean trying to, to tell me you're not like Eddie Stanky? Remember him from <laughs> the Chicago White Sox? I do. Oh, man, he used to take it on the umpires. Oh, yeah. Him and Bill Rigney. Oh, yeah. from the Angels. Yeah, they, they match would. out there. But those guys, that's a, that's a different thing. Because those guys there are making, you know, back then they weren't. But they weren't then. Making $200,000 a year, $100,000 a year, maybe. Maybe back then. Yeah. But you got to remember, they were fighting every year for their job. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we've gone through that. You know, we see that. You know, you get coaches that, the best way to put it is, a coach could have just got done talking to an athletic director. Mm -hmm. And if you don't pull this season up, you're not going to be here next year. Now, even though the, the coach is a teacher or something like that, they may make $2,500, $3,500 or more coach in high school basketball. But for some people, that's a lot of money. And that's helping them. And they want to do good, and they just can't. Like, you've got the incidents where the team revolted two years ago down in Bedford with uh, uh, Coach Thomas, and they got her fired. And let me tell you, she won a championship with them. She's had him in the top five every year, <clears throat> yeah. been in the playoffs, been to the semis, mm. three out of the last six years she was coaching. Like I said, won the championship. One. And it's because the parents think that the coach is wrong. But it's not. It's the, it's the parents that we're finding out are the ones that are wrong. That's why it it makes it not fun. More people leave. I've, I've had a couple of people that left. I'm not going to take this anymore. I just can't take the yelling. You don't take the yelling. You just tell them, hey, good sportsmanship starts with you. Mm -hmm. I've said that plenty of times at a, at a gym. Mm -hmm. and, and the parents get it. When they come over and you say that, you know, mm -hmm. you just tell them, enough's enough. I remember you watched the Red Sox game the other night when the umpire got hit. The third base umpire got hit by the baseball. Oh no, I didn't see that. Like I said, I don't watch baseball, so <laughs> I don't need a much play to catch yeah. that one. One of the Orioles players where he would hit a ball and went right to the third base umpire and hit him right up in the chest not chest area, but right on the waist area. Yeah. And you know, he laughed it off. But but no, I, I'll tell you the best basketball coach and I used to, and I loved him to pieces. He died way too early. It was Frank Monahan. Absolutely. Oh, I miss him. Out of my, my old alma mater. He was my Bishop teacher. Bishop Brady. Well, he was my teacher at Concord High School. Yeah. And all you had to do was get him talking about basketball in the heck of a class. That's all you had to do. Yep. And he didn't teach class enough. <laughs> <laughs> but he was such a nice guy. Oh, I liked him. Yeah, he, you, know? He was, you know, people don't realize it, it was Frank that took the kids to... Uh, Boston, I think, in 66 yeah. or 67, when Bishop Brady yeah. won the New England Championships at the Boston Garden, the Old Garden. Yeah. And that class there, there was some great ball players in that 60, well, I think it was 65, 66, 66, 67. Yeah, right? I would have had him in six, well, I had him at Concord High, so I would have yeah. been in that 69 when I had him there. Yeah. 70, because I graduated in 70, so it was 69, I think, when I had him. Yeah. But he, you know, he was good, he was super bad, but. You know, it's a thankless job. It's an almost like a volunteer, but uh, I just, uh, my hat's off to you, because I mean, I couldn't put up with the the jeers from the crowd. I'd say, hey, you don't like it? Get out here and do it yourself. Well, we, I, I've seen people do that. Yeah. And I tell them, I'm like, like that's not how we handle it. You just call it the best game. Injury. And like everybody asks you, what's the best game you ever had? The best game I have is when I walk off that court <laughs> and nobody says anything to me. Yeah. Yeah. That means it was no controversy. I never had any issues. I was fine. But you work for the team of what? Well, basketball, like a team of five or four referees. No, no two. There's only two of us in, two? in high school. Yeah. Really? Oh, I think yeah. I get some thick in college. I think they them. should. I think in D1 here in New Hampshire, yeah. they should go to a three man system. Yeah. That's just a personal opinion. Just Boy, that's a lot. Because you're working hard, and well, the sure. kids know yeah. that you can't see everything. Yeah. You're looking at your area, you're doing your coverage, and you're looking mm -hmm. and you're moving, but the kids know when your eyes turn to look at something else, you know. I would have guessed you would have had at least three or four definitely no. on that. No, it's only three, even in the uh, college does three and the pros do three. You don't do hockey either. Yeah. No. No, I just do the basketball to keep in shape for softball, but it's it's fun. you, you got to have a passion for it. Like, for me, it's not about the money. Mm -hmm. 
It's about, I enjoy it. The best games I like are third and fourth graders. When you see a little third and fourth mm -hmm. grader that comes down and scores a basket, and it's that kid's first basket of the year ever, you know? I'm the one that's been known to high-five the kid as he's coming up the court saying oh, I great shot that and way. doing that. Because that's that's that kid's moment. I picture and that's you the part like that, that that's the perfect part of official is when you sit there and do it. Yeah. And you also teach the kids at a younger age. You don't you know, they don't see it, but we're teaching them good sportsmanship because we're telling them when somebody knocks and hey, help each other up. And, you know, these kids are doing it. Now, have you gone up north to do games, like in Woodsville or Littleton? Or oh, no, I don't, I don't travel. travel. We don't travel that far. They keep us. There's areas in the state. Our area is located in the Concord area. It's yeah. more 118. Oh, okay. So we've got Hooks at Concord. We go to Bow. But the schools that we do, yeah, I've gone to Laconia. I've gone to Plymouth. I've gone to uh, Cole Brown down in Manchester. I've been down to Nashua. I mean, mm -hmm. they send us around. But it's it, that's a trip up there to Colebrook. I mean, I was up there a few oh, weeks ago. Oh, no. And, oh, right there. I stayed up there in Colebrook and Pitts. I was in Pittsburgh, and boy, that's a trip there. Different story, isn't it? Oh, beautiful God's country. It is, but I'll tell you, there's nothing up there past Lancaster. Oh, it doesn't matter. But uh, I know Woodsville, where my in-laws came from, was that school. They're big in basketball oh, they're huge. and soccer. Ball. Oh, yeah. Whoa, and baseball, too. But you know, but they're like everybody else. They've been trying to get. A, they've been talking football, but it won't happen there. Yeah, you can only have so many. It's I an mean, expensive sport. It's not even that. It's to have the amount of people to play it. Yeah. I mean, where are you going to take it from? Soccer. I know, really. And like you said, soccer is huge up there. Baseball, yeah. basketball, yeah. boys and girls, and they've put out. Woodsville has put out some really oh, good teams over the years. Before. They were champions. They, they've been, and people don't realize that. But the trouble is, see, that division is so big that yeah. they have to come, when they come down here to take on a team, they don't sometimes don't win because it's a different atmosphere or something down there because I don't know, I've you, noticed it. Yeah, that, that D4 division is a big division, and they are scattered, but the majority yeah. of the majority of the teams yeah. are in the North Country. Oh yeah, there's there's a few that aren't, but the majority are. Yeah, because Pittsfield was they were in with Pittsfield and uh, a couple of the Baptist Christian schools too that's in that division. But but no, I'll tell you, Michael, it's really uh, I loved I love to watch some of the sports. I don't like basketball, and I I, I watch like I said, college football is my biggest. Even I mean the pro sports drive me crazy because they earn big bucks. Yeah. Look, what, look what they're getting compared to when Yastrzemski was big in 67. Look what they're getting now. The, His grandson's playing for the Giants. Can you imagine what he signed for? I, yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know. He's, coming yeah. To their, he's coming to Fenway in September and they're going to have a yeah, all Yaz day in there because his grandfather will be in the stands to watch his grandson. Yep. Yeah, Mike Yastrzemski. I didn't know he was playing baseball, but you know, as sports is good for the kids, you know, it's a good thing, you know, to get them in. But trouble is, you know, they're so stretched out. It's either band, orchestra, sports, drama, you know. I mean, I don't know how the kids do it. And, uh, you know, that's why your all the organizations like the Scouts and some of those, you know, youth groups, uh, they even said Little League this year in Concord is suffering bad. Yeah, Little League and Concord, the yeah. uh, National and American only had three teams total. Yeah. And you're right, it, but it's getting affected by lacrosse. Yeah. And that's the big thing because baseball is so drawn out. Yeah. It's boring to people. It and is, that's yeah. the biggest thing where you've got lacrosse, <laughs> the ball's always moving. People yeah. are always moving. You're always going somewhere. Yeah. So it, it makes a difference. Basketball's the same way. You're moving all the time. Yeah. It's those sports that are slow and that are the ones that are getting hit the hardest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And, it's, and that's a tough one there. But the, the big thing is is for people to be aware. It, it's something for them to look at for their kids and stuff like that to want to come in and make some money yeah. and learn the sport sure. and learn how to work with somebody else and as a team on the field yeah. and not just a team on the court yeah. because you still get those players that are more developed than others and are yeah. better. Yeah. And they know it, so you still get that, as we used to call back in our days, the ball hog. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And that's... but now you know it. That's changed a lot, but you know, every now and then you'll come across a team like that who's got yeah. the superstar, sure. 
But the thing that's the biggest detriment too is you, you watch people in the NBA and the WNBA and they take that walk. Oh, you know, yeah. No person can make it from the top of the key to the basket to dunk it in a legal motion. Hmm. And they're taking three steps, four steps, and they let it go because it's the oh, game. Yeah, because it's giving the money. Yeah. The money's what's going to be coming in. Oh, yeah. Well, we're getting to a close around town. I can see he's, he's up to two fingers, so that means we're coming to a close. But it's really been good to see you again after all these years. Oh, yeah. I do stress the word all <laughs> these years. I did when he was telling Concord. And uh, you live in Concord, right? I, I do. No, Concord. Yeah. Yep. And, I love it. Uh, yeah, no sucker than me. I mean, it's always, the Heights has always been my home up here. But, um, but it's really good to see you. I know your dad's doing good. and uh, He is. Please tell him I said hello if he remembers me. Oh, <laughs> he doesn't forget anybody. You'd be surprised. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, God, that was what? Ago when he was chief, he came in '75. Was it '75? Yeah, he left in '94. Really? '95. I didn't know he that. was on that long. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. Huh. Well, he was here a long time then. He was. He was here just over 20 years. Wow. Yeah. He got his 20 in, and then he took his appointment down in Washington. What did he do now? Uh, he went to work with the. He went to work. Uh, in the Department of Justice. Really? Yeah. He, oh, you should have him come on sometime. He could tell you. I would that. love to that have be him. His. I would love to have him come on. Yeah. Well, we got to get to say goodbye, but thanks to Brian over there who's done well on his first show back, and uh, and your little doggy there, she's doing. He's doing really good, <laughs> and uh, he's calm and quiet. Yeah. Well, I thank you for having me here. It was a oh, pleasure. Oh, Michael, anytime. Yeah. You know, I'd love to have you come back on. So whenever you will, you let Brian know and we'll get you on here. So. Perfect. Yeah. Well, with that in mind, we want to thank Mike Welchuk for coming in and talking about basketball and his involvement as a referee, umpire in baseball, softball, I should say. But uh, give him a call if you have any questions. What number can you reach out? Uh, 603-491-4033. Okay, good. There it is. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing you soon. I'm Dick Patton, your host on Around Town.